Oh, okay, yeah. All right, I went ahead and clicked the button because it takes a second and it's like 29. Cool, all right. We'll see. Okay, we're live. <laughs> Super alive. Doesn't have some. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, we made it. We are live again for another episode of Discovery Adventures. This is a program where somebody's in the Field Museum and it's going to be able to go through our space, looking at our real artifacts as we learn all about some cool science topics. Um, today, Jeff is actually going to take us on a journey through time. We're going to be doing a little time travel and actually looking at time in terms of space. And because this is live and you are hopefully watching on our YouTube channel, feel free to use that chat function to ask us any questions along the way. We also may be asking you questions and would love to hear your responses in the chat. Without further ado, Jeff, tell us what's going on. Awesome, thanks, Anna. Yeah, I'm Jeff Schroeder. I'm here in the Field Museum and so happy that I still get to come in on Tuesdays and do this. I am right now at the South Stairs and we're gonna take a journey through Stanley Field Hall and we're gonna talk about the timeline of the planet Earth and how different things formed and when we think they came about based on the fossil evidence and geologic evidence that we find. And as Anna said, we're gonna to try to use distance to represent time. One thing I've found that when I talk to people about time, it's really, really hard to visualize like the vastness and how a million years or a billion years fits in. But I think we can visualize distance better. So we're gonna try this and we're gonna take a journey. What we're gonna do is use one inch to represent one million years. A million years in itself is just like almost unfathomable, but we're gonna use only one inch to represent that. So if you're watching at home or with a group or whatever, go ahead and show what you think an inch is. I sort of already showed it. this out. So we've got our tape measure, an inch. It's about as long as this part of my finger here. So from between the knuckle to not quite the end of the finger, but that's about an inch. Not very far. About like so. So now I want everyone to think about how long do you think modern day humans or homo sapiens, our species has been on the earth? and show that with your fingers. I'll show you in just a moment. So we've got one inch, remember that's a million years and we're gonna keep using that throughout this whole presentation. Okay, so if people have had a chance, say modern humans, homo sapiens have been on earth, we think about 200,000 years. So that's about a fifth of an inch. Wow, Tiny so that's little more bit. than a quarter inch. That's, that's not a lot. Yeah, that's not a lot at all. So yeah, we have not been here very long as far as overall time is concerned. Again, this is a million years. So now let's talk about some other events. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and place a human. And now I'm using models. So we have to keep in mind that models are not to scale. They're, we try to keep them pretty accurate, but sometimes they are a little off. So we're gonna use a model of a human and we're gonna put this model on the stairs. Right the a great model of a human there, our friend Darwin. <laughs> so there you go. You can see <laughs> Darwin standing there at the foot of the stairs. And now we're going to pan over Stanley Field Hall. And I want everyone to think while we're panning, I want you to try to decide where in Stanley Field Hall you think Sue would have been. Remember, this is a million years. We're standing here with Darwin at the foot of the stairs present day. How far are we going to have to travel? to get to when Sue, the T-Rex, lived. So we're gonna look at Stanley Field Hall. And now what I'd like you to do is tell Anna in the chat where you think we'll have to go to get to where Sue lived. So use a landmark if you'd like. You don't have to say like feet or distance, but is it to the bison's tail? Is it to the bison's nose? Is it to that first fence? Is it to Maximo? Is it to the totem poles? Where do you think we have to go to travel back to where Sue, the T-Rex, lived. Okay, so Sue was alive, it seems like a long time ago, but in the grand scheme of time, if an inch is only a million years, I think we're gonna be going pretty far back in time. 
Mm-hmm. If anybody knows approximately when the dinosaurs were extinct, that's going to be a big clue too. Yeah. <laughs> so as we're thinking about that, I'm going to place one more thing because Darwin needs a friend here. So we would say about 5 million years ago, just to give you another idea, about five inches, this, um, we're going to use this guy. I'm sorry, I couldn't find a mammoth. This is a dinotherium, but mammoths came about about 5 million years ago. So they evolved about 5 million. We're going to put that right in front of Darwin. Oh, let's turn it sideways. Okay. Um, Anna, have we heard of Not a lot of distance between mammals, period, and humans. Oh. Very short amount of time. Oh, not mammoths, mammoths. <laughs> yeah, mammoths and humans. So mammals, we could go back a long ways, but all right. Has anyone had any thoughts yet on where Sue? We're getting a lot of friendly greetings in the chat. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. And if anybody wants to try to hazard a guess as to how far away from those humans, what landmarks in this museum, maybe the bison or the bench, how far away would it be the time of the T-Rex, right? Like, is Jeff there? Where was it? Further, is it closer? Was it, I'm gonna have to take a long journey to get to where the time of the T-Rex was. Yeah, or alternatively, you can think of it as if you know where Sue used to be in the museum, which is past where the elephants are. The original, when Sue was placed in the museum was like over yeah. towards the north side. Would Sue's time period be closer or further from Sue's skeleton? Yeah, about where Maximo's um, shoulder blades are, right about there. That was where Sue was at. Okay. So as people are thinking about that, oh, let me know if we get any responses, Anna. We have we have a math. We have six meters or six M, which I've interpreted as meters. Okay. So yeah, Sue, um, Sue lived about 67 million years ago. And so that would... I'm going to use feet. Apologies to those who use the metric system because I understand feet a little better still. But Sue would have lived 67 million years ago. That's about six and a half feet from the beginning. So basically where I'm at right now. I rolled it a few feet while we were talking. <laughs> so this is where Sue would have been. 67 million years. We've only traveled about six feet from the beginning. So here's our T-Rex model. We're going to add that down here. And right about an inch towards the stairs from Sue, I'm gonna leave this. Now this is not a meteorite, disclaimer, this is actually dinosaur poop, but we're going to pretend this is a meteorite and, or an asteroid and about a million years or an inch in our time scale after Sue lived, we believe a giant asteroid collided with the earth, brought an end to the age of the dinosaurs, except for our friends, the birds who survived. So I'm gonna set this bird by Mr. Darwin because we still have some dinosaurs alive today. Sue is gonna go down here and the meteorite. And then I'm gonna show you a couple cool artifacts. Yeah, and we did have a Noah in the chat that maybe it would be all the way to the bison, but this seems like it's a lot closer than the bison. It is a lot closer, yeah. So in the grand scheme of things, we still haven't traveled that far. We've got a long journey ahead. <laughs> So we've got two different things here. And this is kind of a fun little trivia fact that I haven't had a chance to share yet. But um, again, I'm not wearing a mask because I'm pretty much alone in this huge hall. But think about your teeth. Think about maybe your longest tooth in your mouth. Maybe it's one of the front ones, a canine. With the root, it might be about an inch, maybe not quite. And then think about your ulna. And that is this part of your arm right there. So. Pretty easy question, just answer at home. Which is longer? Your tooth well, or your ulna? One tooth or your entire ulna, which is this part of your forearm here. Oh my goodness. Well, feel for humans, that's like a real extreme difference. Yeah. Ulna is way oh, bigger. Much longer on the ulna, yeah. So we humans are wonderfully adept at using our arms. That's how we get food to our mouth. That's how we manipulate different objects. Think about Sue the T-Rex though. Did Sue use those arms much? We still don't know, but maybe. Still don't know, but we're doubtful. We don't think they used them much. So we're gonna look at two different things. This is a replica of a single T-Rex tooth 
and this is a T-Rex ulna. Which one is actually bigger? That's so wild. One tooth is longer than Sue's entire forearm. Yes, so that tells you a little bit about structure and function. What did the T-Rex use more often? Arms or teeth? I think we can hazard a pretty good guess. <laughs> yeah, that's a really cool comparison. So you said both of those were replicas, which makes sense because yeah. the reason Sue fossil is upstairs. Um, but that coprolite, which we were using as a temporary asteroid impact, is that a real fossil? This is, yes. I'm actually holding real dinosaur poop in my hand right now. It has completely fossilized. So when something fossilizes, it takes in different minerals and the minerals replace the original substance that goes for bone too. So if you see an actual fossilized dinosaur bone, it's not actually bone anymore. It's mineralized. So, Very cool. Yeah. So we've got a real dino poop. I'll leave that there with the meteorite spot. Any questions yet, Anna? Um, we just had that one question of, is, is it real um, from Vicky with an X? Um, and we also had some appreciation just for seeing time laid out like this. People think it's really cool. Oh, good. I'm glad. This is the first time I've tried it like this, and I hope that people enjoy it. It's a good way to show it. So now we've traveled a little bit further. So I'm going to show you kind of where we've come. So you can see Darwin and the mammoth. There's Sue and the tooth. And then I see some little thing there on the ground. That's our next stop. That would be about 101 million years ago when Maximo lived. And so here is a model of a titanosaur. And this little thing, we actually, a little fact, fun fact for all of you out there, Maximo is a cast or an exact copy, but Maximo's head was never found. We actually don't have the real skull anywhere. So it had to be, approximated with another similar species. And so we actually don't have true casts of Maximo's teeth. So I'm going to use something else, a Camarasaurus tooth. And this is a replica. Kind of looks like a spoon, right? More for vegetable soup than slicing meat like Sue's tooth. And this will give you an idea, much smaller, but still built for that job. And Anna, there were a lot of different long neck dinosaurs, weren't there? Yeah. So, and you can see those are two different body positions too. Some of them we think based on the bones and the size and the length of their legs, like a giraffe has long front legs and shorter back legs and their neck goes more vertical than some of our other dinosaurs we think were stretched out across a greater horizontal distance. But yeah, there's Apatosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Titanosaurus, a lot of different long neck dinosaurs. And the thing is they lived at totally different times, some of them. There were many, many in the Jurassic, but Maximo, the Titanosaur, lived in the Cretaceous. So did Argentinosaurus. So we are going to put this Maximo model with a little tooth. So we can keep track of that. And we're going to move on a little further here. And I have another replica to show us. Oh, yeah. Does anybody have a guess as to what dinosaur this is from? Compared to my head, it's about the same size. Ooh. So if you think you know what dinosaur this is from, go ahead and chat that to Anna. And meanwhile, I'm going to make a couple observations on it. So let me get it close so everyone can see it. Okay, try to get the lighting. There we go. So I can see this is an exact replica or a cast. So it's made from the original, has all the details of the original. I see some kind of squiggly lines. They almost remind me of something there in my wrist. Those kind of bluish things you might be able to see. Huh. So are we getting, starting to get some- We're getting some guesses. I, Nick Van Acker knows what it is. It is a Stegosaurus, Ghostfire X. Thought it was maybe a head. It is about the size of a head, but it's a part of the Stegosaurus. It is, it's a part of Stegosaurus. Look on Stegosaurus's back. There's something kind of flat and thin like that. Well, one of these little tiny plates near the back, that's what this actually is. So imagine how big the actual ones would be, the larger ones. So Stegosaurus had these plates all over its back. Scientists are still puzzled as to what exactly those could be, but we noticed, right, some evidence. There are blood vessels in there, so they could have been used to heat or cool, temperature regulation. They also may have been used to attract the mate or just identify the species. But we're gonna put Stegosaurus down here 
and it's very hard to tell because it's fairly close. But we're going to look one more time here. And there's Stegosaurus as we go back in time. There's wow, and I want to notice that that Stegosaurus is really far away from T-Rex. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're fighting each other in like mm -hmm. tunes or movies. That doesn't seem like that could happen. Nope. Something seems wrong there, doesn't it? Yeah. Stegosaurus and T-Rex were by no means living together. Dinosaurs, we can see we've traveled a ways. Definitely not Stanley Field Hall. But the age of the dinosaurs spanned millions, tens of millions, over 100 million years. So these creatures didn't all live at the same time. You can see there's actually hard to tell, but there's more time span between Stegosaurus and T-Rex than there is between T-Rex and us. That's Just think about that. We're closer to T-Rex's time than Stegosaurus was. All right. And yet we still haven't made it that far through the hall. Uh-oh. So while we're moving a little bit, we've gotten here. Let's go a little further back to right about this spot right here. And so we're not even, let me give you everyone an idea, not even to the bison yet. So we're at the spot. And Anna, if you could put a slide up for us real quick, that yeah. slide of a interesting looking creature mm -hmm. very reptilian looking dinosaur more and more we think that dinosaurs may have had feathers especially some of the meat eaters birds are dinosaurs so similar to birds but this one looks very reptilian this is one of the first dinosaurs so the first dinosaurs again we're still paleontologists are still kind of figuring this out and there's some debate but about 230 to 235 million years ago we think the first dinosaurs evolved and this would have been one of the first, Herrerasaurus. We actually have, this is a life-size model. We also have a cast of the skeleton upstairs in Evolving Planet. Hopefully people will be able to get in soon to check that out. And so that would have been one of the first dinosaurs. So we have traveled about that far from the stairs and we've now gotten to the first dinosaurs. We've got a long ways to go, I think but I want to see what other people think. If this is when the first dinosaurs evolved, where did Earth begin? When did Earth form? So while we start to move, think big now. Where will we have to travel to to when Earth first formed as a planet? So please send those guesses in as we begin to travel and Anna will tell me, but we're gonna talk a little bit about another creature as we wait for that. So again, if we're right here, we're about maybe 20, 25 feet from the stairs. Did Earth first form about at the totem poles? Maybe Maximo or the elephants, the plants? Go ahead and send a guess. Now here is another creature. We've traveled back in time now past dinosaurs. This animal, therefore, do you think it could be a dinosaur? Ooh, it looks a lot like a dinosaur. It's got pointy teeth. It does, it looks a lot like one. But you know what, dinosaurs, one of the things we know is they had two holes behind their eye. Here's the eye, it's got one hole. So that's one clue it's not a dinosaur. The other being that we've traveled back past the first dinosaurs. So this definitely couldn't be a dinosaur and it's not even an ancestor of dinosaurs. This is a little more related to us, to mammals. This is when those reptiles and mammals first started to divide into two kind of separate groups or distinct groups from a common ancestor. And this is about 286 million years ago. This guy is Dimetrodon. Now I'll put a little it model. It is indeed our friend Dimetrodon. Somebody, I think um, Ghostfire was thinking Diplo something like Diplodocus. It does start with a D, this is Dimetrodon. Diplodocus, yeah, or there's a Diplocolis, which is a weird boomerang shaped salamander type of thing that live pretty oh. close to this, so that could be it but yeah this is dimetrodon always have a dimetrodon let's go ahead and put this down and we're going to leave the model let's give us reference all right so we have traveled back now 300 million years and we're at the bison's tail right here we have real fossils i'm going to do my best to show them it's going to be a little hard there we go without moving them around too much. I think I can take I can them. grab my model of that too. I have a model too, and it's a fossil. Yeah. Is. So we have the fossils. Your model might be better. <laughs> Mine's kind of pale. 
here's the creature yeah it's a very funky funky animal <laughs> it's the state fossil of fossil. illinois yes wonderful That's wonderful the friend <laughs> the tully monster so a lot of the fossils we find in illinois are actually from before the time of the dinosaurs so 309 million years ago we are at the time of the Tully monster and where a lot of the Mazan Creek fossils in Illinois are found. Anna, any guesses yet as to how far I'm gonna have to drive this thing to get to the beginning? Yeah, I don't think anyone's guessed how far away the beginning of the earth is. A lot of people were trying to figure out the Dimetrodon. The Dimetrodon, that's cool, yeah. So the beginning of the earth and also if anyone would prefer, again, looking at the hall, we're gonna make a couple stops. We're gonna stop at the first life on the planet. And we're also gonna travel to the beginning of when the- Oh, Earth and actually I did miss when Nick thought that it was maybe 400 feet or so, the other end of the hall. Oh, I like that, I like that. All right, Nick, I think that's a great guess. We're gonna find out pretty quick because we are working our way past a lot of the complex life. So we have now made it about even with the bison's beard and I have a couple of real fossils. Let's see what we think these are. Ooh, that's a fun looking fossil. Noah thinks to the totem poles. Okay, cool, end of the hall for Nick. Yeah, and then this one. What does that look like? Kind of reminds me of something I've seen. Anna, does it remind you of anything? Yeah, that looks like a fern, like plants we still have today. Yes, it is a fern. We have now traveled back in time over 400 million years. So we have gone back about 470 million years. And now the first ferns weren't that far back, but the first land plants were. And ferns have definitely been around for over 300 million years. They would have been around with Tully, so they're still around today. But we're gonna use this and the horsetail fossil to represent plants. The first land plants were probably a lot simpler, a lot smaller, but land plants were first forming about 470 million years ago. Wow. It's a long history of plants. It is, it is. And I see little bits of plant on the floor. I'll bet it came from. Oh, there's plants in the ceiling. Uh, there's plants in the ceiling. It's hard to see, I'm sorry, that's not the greatest lighting, but those plants on the ceiling and our plant clouds, we might see them better, there we go. Those are actually plants that are similar to what would have been in the Cretaceous. So we would have to go all the way back <laughs> to Maximo. <laughs> Just to give you a scale, because it's a little easier to see me than it is with these tiny models. So this is all the way back at Maximo. Here's Darwin. That's coming forward in time that Stegosaurus to Metrodon, the Tully monster to plants. So that's a pretty long way. journey so far. And we've got a long way to go still. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move out to the front of the bison's case. We've now made it just past the bison. And I have a small fossil here. It might look familiar to some people. Yeah, this is a, a classic fossil. It is. It's got like three little lobes in the front like trilobes, and then it's got this little segmented body. This doesn't even look like a vertebrate. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the horseshoe crab, but more ancient. Yeah. Here we go. Ghostfire X thinks that it is a trilobite. Nice. Ghostfire X, you got it. This is a trilobite. So trilobites, the more primitive ones, some of the first complex life, there were a few things before that, but some of the first complex life that we kind of recognized was about 520 million years ago, 521. And so we have now traveled 521 million years into the past. We've found trilobites. Now, when was the first life? This was some of the first complex life, multicellular with a lot of different um, parts to its body. What was that first life? And when was it? Anyone have a guess? What the yeah, like what would the first life? living organisms be like? Hmm. Seems like we've gotten a little bit simpler as we've gone back in time. Mm -hmm. Keep thinking about that. I'm going to start, I'm going to go so we can see how far we're traveling. 
there's a little view of our different creatures. We're getting further away. So our next stop is going to be at the first living things on the planet Earth. Yeah, and we do have um, a guess of what that first thing might have been. Um, bacteria or something from Ghostfire X. And okay. Nick said single-celled stuff. Yeah, all right, good. I think We're both of those are pretty solid. Let's take a look. We've already gone past the totem poles. There's the totem poles. We're nearing the elephants. And we're getting close to the Maximo, but we're not there yet. We've got to keep moving to get to the bacteria. Anna, would you like to put a slide up real quick? Yeah, let me pull up our slide so we can kind of see what this distance looks like in a picture. So if we are looking all across that line, the green mark that's where we had the first dinosaurs and then the first complex life um so looking at like trilobite and things like that that's where we have that blue mark but if we go all the way back to the first life period that is our yellow mark so this is a kind of a curving photo it's you know panorama with your camera but it's it's a pretty huge distance between the first life and the first complex life where we start having multiple specialized cells, more complex functions. Somebody said that thing is almost bigger than the museum. <laughs> yes. Mine is pretty long. We're gonna have to see where it goes because you have to figure out where the whole yeah. earth began. <laughs> that time frame. Yeah. Yeah, gonna we gotta be getting pretty close, so I hope. I don't are. wanna get too cold going outside here. So we are yeah. So we're at Maximo's back legs, kind of the base of the tail here. And oh, all right. Jeff's reconnecting there. Okay, it looks like you're reconnected. All right. Is that a we got a little Maximo interference exciting? there? We are at Maximo's hind legs by the tail. It is a fossil of something exciting. You wouldn't think it's exciting. It's all over in our bodies. It's all over the earth now. It's bacteria, but yes, a fossil of stromatolites. This is the first living thing on the planet. Simple, single-celled organisms like bacteria. It's often called blue-green algae today. It's not actually algae. To get to algae, we'd have to go back past the elephants, but right now we're at bacteria. And it's the stuff you don't wanna swim with because it could make you sick, but there's very similar bacteria was the first living thing we think on earth. And the cool thing about that is that probably 4 billion to 3 billion years ago, it's still debated and that's a big time frame. This bacteria would have started to use a process. We're gonna hold it in the light here. It's not gonna do the process now, but it would have photosynthesized. So before there were ever plants, this bacteria could start producing oxygen when there was very, very little on earth. And that would allow down the road some of those complex things to begin to form as oxygen increased. So we are the first living thing on the planet Earth. And we might even be able to go back a little further, again, if this actually came about 4 billion years ago, because we're not there yet. And we are moving further back in time. So let's see how yeah. far we've come. Can oh, wow. anyone see even... Darwin? No, I just see the stairs and I know them. that- It's too far. I can't yeah. even see the other little- I think you're switching internet spots again, Jeff. So your video is a little choppy right now. But yes, thank you Ghostfire for all of your contributions because you have some great insights. We did indeed have bacteria. <laughs> yeah, for those that, thank you for being here. Yeah. All right, and Jeff's little... internet's back. Hello. Yes. It's a little shaky here. We've we've traveled too far back in time and we're getting out of the range of like human thought here. So we're starting to lose our connection. But this is the front door and I'm afraid to go much further because we could totally lose our connection. But... All right, well, Jeff, Jeff's connection is a little shaky. But I'm gonna go ahead 
and throw up in there. This is how far you would have to travel to get to the origins of the world as we know it, the universe. That's how far away the Big Bang is. It's way outside the door all the way into Lake Michigan a little bit. I'm not sure if Jeff is still disconnected. That's okay. But you can see it's pretty far. There are some pretty big steps between the origins of the universe, between the popular life and where humans are today. Some huge leaps. And we really haven't been here as a species for very long at all, which is pretty amazing. I'll see if Jeff comes back. But if anybody has any questions too, um, feel free to throw those in the chat. We would love to try to answer your questions. Yeah, his time machine is going rogue. Our friend Jeff he could be anywhere in time right now. And this is all still with one inch being a million years. So even though it's not too long of a walk from the museum to the lakeshore, that is millions and millions of years. Thank you, Journey Secondary School for participating. We hope you had fun. Yeah, and if you have to sign off, this is like kind of the end of the half hour. We can hang on a bit longer if anybody can and has questions, but thank you all so much for coming. We hope you had fun. These do happen um, weekly through the 16th. So come on back next Tuesday for more adventures. We're gonna be looking at African animals. Some really cool animals and some really cool adaptations. So feel free to come on back. Wonder, Jeff really might have traveled to a distant, distant land. I think Jeff might be already disappeared. <laughs> but in any case, if nobody has any questions, thank you for going on our time traveling adventure. And clearly, time travel can put you in a new place. That's where Jeff is. But we'll see you next time. Thanks for coming and stay curious.